Hello, everybody. This is Dave Burkus for the Burkus Report for Eye on Business. Today, our subject is bankers. Love them or hate them, they may affect your future. Let's get right down to it. Your banking relationship can be like a great marriage or a bad trip to the DMV. In most cases, it's strictly your choice. But the results of that choice are going to reverberate for what could be years. For a start, how did you open your first bank account? Did you walk into a branch and fill out the forms and take your first 10 checks and then just kind of walk away? Did you remember the name of your bank employee who helped open the account? Did you ask for a relationship manager or anything of the kind to help you in your business? Well, that would have been your first mistake. As I found in numerous companies over the years, that initial visit to set the stage is the beginning of a relationship. But then again, why bother with a relationship if all you want to do is open a checking account? Well, it's time for me to tell you a few stories to illustrate what you should know to cultivate a good relationship with your banker. And it is never too late, even if you opened that account years ago. Here's an example, an unintentional overdraft of your checking account. Most of us have suffered this at least once or more often. Well, whether caused by sloppy accounting or bad cash control or a third party taking money from your account for a recurring charge or even by a PayPal purchase not recorded in the books, people or companies with marginal account balances will someday be hit with an overdraft. Today, many banks charge $35 or so for each check paid with non-sufficient funds. One of my companies was recently hit with 10 such charges in a single day before they realized the error and that caused $350 in overdraft charges in that single day. So, what are the alternative responses? Well, the answer is relationship banking. If your CEO or CFO had no relationship with the banker in charge of the account, there is very little chance of that charge being reversed. Even if your bank had a history with you and your account, if you had no relationship. On the other hand, a good relationship an established history could or would have resulted in a call to the banker, a short and rational explanation, followed by your banker's immediate promise to reverse the charges. Yes, if the habit becomes routine, all bets are off, sometimes including whether the bank will even keep your account open for you in the future. And there are some more important issues. Most business banks will grant a $50,000 line of credit in the form of a bank-issued credit card, often requiring a personal guarantee by the CEO. And that's an expensive alternative. You have to realize that with costs carried for amounts carried over the due date period, even a few days beyond it, of between 8 and 24% when annualized. Well, with a good banking relationship, your banker can help you with a line of credit at reasonable rates, fitted to your needs and established in a way that won't drain cash each month, affecting business health and growth. Yes, most banks require that same personal guarantee, even for lines of credit. Even for lines of credit for receivables or equipment or other secured loans. There is usually one exception. Some banks, known as venture banks, will recognize the issue of a company with multiple investors, especially with a venture capital company as one of those investors. By substituting a small amount of warrants to purchase stock in the company at reasonable prices for what would have been a personal guarantee, those banks will eliminate the need for the founder or CEO to sign such a guarantee. And it trusts instead with the relationship with the VC as the overriding importance. There are many types of bank loans, including loans guaranteed by the SBA, the Small Business Administration, in which the bank and the SBA share the risk 
and therefore sometimes require little guarantees or no guarantees, but it's worth time spending time with your banker to discuss cash management, banking needs, and various opportunities. But what happens when something goes wrong? Sometimes you get into a cash bind and just can't make the payment, or even need to restructure a loan. That's a time when your personal relationship with your banker makes or breaks a company. Does that sound a bit dramatic? Ever hear of the word workout? The workout division of your bank? I hope not. This is the group the banker turns to when your account has shown signs of being too high a risk for a normal banking relationship. Your banker is removed from the process once the divide is bridged and you're introduced to a workout specialist who dictates your banking future, typically by establishing new rules requiring accelerated payment, perhaps the sale of assets, a direct collection by the bank of receivables to pay down the loan, and other mild or draconian efforts to protect the bank or reduce its exposure. You don't want to be sent to a workout. On the other hand, if you've been communicating your progress, both positive and negative, to your banker on a regular basis, that person can mitigate the draconian moves if she or he understands the reasons for a temporary setback, having a history and a confidence in your abilities to work through the problem. So it is all about relationships and how you establish and what you do when you first walk into the bank. Well, it's not too late. If you failed to do this back then, you can do it now. Start with a call, a phone call, or a personal visit to the bank, and ask for the name of your relationship banker. They'll figure it out, and they'll give you that. And perhaps that will help reinforce the beginning of a great positive experience. It's just one more of those things a good manager does to ensure the ultimate success of the enterprise. Well, this is Dave Burkus for the Burkus Report for Eye on Business. See you next time. Welcome to Eye on Business Innovation, and I have a brief public service announcement before we go to our regular show. I want to congratulate our technical guy, uh, Steve. Steve is the only guy I know that uh, can have major surgery one week and be on the job again the next week. And so we owe everything to Steve here for keeping on trucking. And uh, Steve, we're glad to have you back with us. We very much appreciate your services, and I don't know how you do it, but uh, if it was me, you wouldn't see me for a couple of years. So uh, we're all very impressed. Thank you for your help, and now we'll go to our regular show. Mm -hmm. I'm Zondra Laskowski, founder of OC Angel Investors, and you are watching Eye on Business Innovations. So welcome to Eye on Business Innovation, where we talk about innovative companies, their innovative products, and the innovative people that run those companies and come up with those products. Today, we're very privileged to have with us Christy and Zandra from OC. Welcome to the show, ladies. Thank you, Shan. Thank you. So tell us about OC. Some of our viewers may have seen uh, the first show, but a lot has happened. So what's, what's new at OC? Well, OC Angel Investors is a women's angel investment group. Okay. We're based at the UCI Cove. At, U, at University of Irvine, California. Okay. And we started in, a year ago, uh, January 2017. Ah, okay. And we were building our membership. We really want to educate our members on okay. what angel investing is. Uh, they, they usually manage their own portfolios and they have assets. And okay. we want to show them that this is another alternative asset. And we look at companies mostly from Southern California, but we do look at companies nationwide as well. Okay. So, first of all, happy anniversary. Thank you. That's a big deal. Now, Christy, tell us about the members. Who, who's a part of this whole thing? Well, they're um, usually entrepreneurs or successful women. Okay. Um, you know, they've, they just are a full gamut, um, okay. you know, in all different industries, attorneys and bankers and, um, you know, like I said, entrepreneurs okay. that have okay. done, been very successful in their, own, in their own right. Now, how do you get them to join? How do you find these people? How do they find you? How do you get them interested in the group? Um, a lot of, uh, of our members are bringing in their friends okay, um, okay. and people that we meet uh, at different events, um, at different um, women networking events. Okay, okay. So that's usually how we find them. Okay. Uh, word of mouth a, a lot. Okay, so. fantastic. Now, what's the special need here? What's the problem we're trying to solve, basically? Well, 
I started angel investing in 2013, okay. and I shared my stories with a lot of my friends, okay. and they, they were intrigued. They didn't understand what it was, and they'd okay. heard about it. They'd seen Shark Tank, but it seemed a little bit over their head. Okay. So I, we're, de I'm demystifying it. we're demystifying it with OC. Okay. Okay. I think the other piece is right now what's going on in our business world yeah. Everyone wants more women involved. Our voices okay. involved in, in the board in the boardrooms in okay. top positions in companies, and it's just not happening yet. Okay. So I think okay. one avenue of bringing a woman's opinion and a woman to a board is through angel investing. Okay. So that's what we're trying to educate. Maybe from the ground floor up, okay. they're going to see some deals. They may okay. not. They're not going to invest in all of them, but eventually yeah. they will invest in something, and hopefully that will be a very successful endeavor for them okay. and from there they can do more investment and lend their voice, lend their experience to these okay. emerging companies. So this is very timely then. Um, I mean you caught you kind of caught the wave here in some some ways. Right. So. By accident we did. That wasn't yeah. our goal but <laughs> but, I mean, but but yeah, but it's, yeah. it really does tie yeah. into having more women part of the conversation. Yep. Fantastic, fantastic. Now what's your background? How did you get into this? What got you interested in doing this in the first place, Christy? What was well, I've been an entrepreneur my whole life, basically. Okay, okay. I've owned businesses for since I was a teenager, almost. No kidding, okay. So, yeah, and so I've owned multiple businesses, and okay. I just had an entrepreneurial heart, um, and um, I'm an angel investor myself. Okay. And okay. just to repeat what Zandra said, that, um, you know, being an angel investor and being involved in other angel groups, I've noticed that it's very male centric. Yes, it is. <laughs> and so, and and women tend to be a little, um, they they tend to shy away from okay. joining okay. some of the groups because of that. Okay. And so we have felt that this is a great opportunity to um, make it more comfortable for women to join okay. into a group okay. like this. And you know, we have a great passion for it. We, we do love we do. it. It's, yeah, it's fun. Well, it I was really just going to ask you. So what? What's the partnership? How did you find each other, or what was the reason you kind of went to work on this together? Well, we met through mutual friends a few years ago, yeah. so okay. we knew each okay. other socially. And I said, Christy, we're starting. I'm starting this group. You have to be a part of it. She came okay. to the first meeting. She okay. was sold. She joined, and she's. To, she, we are passionate about the same thing. Okay. And okay. we, I think we ha we make such a great partnership because okay. we also come from similar backgrounds with our business. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we've been around for a while. Okay. But we okay. we love to invest. We love people. We love teaching. Okay. I mean, so th all of that makes it happen with our group. Okay. So what are some of the biggest challenges you face so far? Um, I would say for our group, I think it's a challenge to um, basically we're trying to grow our membership. And okay. I think it okay. is a bit of a challenge um, okay. just for women to understand what it is that we're doing. I think okay. just growing okay. the membership, that's always kind of, you know, we're a startup. Yep. Yep. And, and we face the same challenges as most startups do. Mm -hmm. yep. um, so I think that's one of our, our bigger challenges. Because our membership, uh, uh, to be an angel investor, number one, you have to have the, the assets. Okay. You have to have the money to invest. Yeah. And you have to have the risk appetite. If you're lucky and if you, if you partner with the right people and you do your diligence, hopefully those investments turn out, you know, make you money. But the fact is a lot of them don't. Okay. So it's, okay. it's having the risk appetite. That's important. But you also have to know something of investment. Okay. And so to find a person that has all of those, and be, be, be passionate about angel investing and learning more. Okay. To find all those ingredients can be challenging yep. Yep. in the right member, but they're out there. And we're finding them. Yeah. We're really excited. We had four members join since January, okay. and they're passionate. When they come to the meeting and they see what we do, they're hooked. They're like, we're joining. We get what you're doing. We get what your okay. mission is. So tell me about the group. How does the group work together or join in so this isn't just a one-off individual effort? Well, um, how does it work uh, as far as, well, we have monthly meetings. Okay. And we also have uh, social events as okay. well. Okay. Um, and at our meetings, we have presenting companies come in, and um, they'll do their pitch and, okay. and uh, uh, present what they're, what they're offering. And um, so the, the investors are able to see what, what's out there. Okay. Um, there's no requirement to invest, okay. um, but they are able to. Um, we also have people coming in to help with the educating our group. Okay. 
Um, each month we try and have them learn something about okay. investment. Okay. Um, we also have um, uh, somebody coming in to give an economic report as okay. well, okay. so there's okay. a good feel of what's going on in the world as well because we feel that's important. Uh, the education piece is very important, obviously. That's, that's okay. you know, okay. what Zandra originally, you know, but that was her idea to begin okay. with is okay. that, you know, education was such a huge piece of this. Um, and so uh, there's that piece. Um, and so basically um, they're given an opportunity to invest or, or not, okay. but at least to okay. learn what's going on out there. Okay. Um, we have a roundtable discussion about the okay. investors as they, um, after they're done with their, with their pitches. And they're given an opportunity to uh, reach out to speak with them again and do some okay. due diligence okay. as well. So it sounds a lot of like the women are helping women. I mean, they're helping each other and uh, working yes, together. Yes, we make a it team. a friendly environment because okay. um, there's no bad question, and we we kind of walk them through the process okay. Okay. Of, of how to look at companies. Okay. And since we've been around, I mean, we had our soft launch in 2016, okay. and we had um, three companies present back then. This was before we even we even had a name, and okay. one of the companies <laughs> received funding okay. from our group. Last year, I'm putting the numbers together, three companies received funding. Okay. And this year, I just found out today at today's meeting from one of the companies that pitched last, last month has received funding. Okay. So it's, we feel very proud that we're bringing really great companies yep. Yep. to our members and that we have the ecosystem there. We have the support, whether it's looking at term sheets, understanding valuation, the, the steps for due diligence. Due diligence, we okay. have that support within our group. So how can people in our audience get in touch with you if they either want to become a member or they want to be a presenting company? They can go to our website. It's OC, which is O-S-E-A, okay. angelinvestors.com, and they can um, click on the About tab, and okay. that talks about who we are. Okay, great. Well, I really want to thank you for coming in. It sounds like very innovative work and much needed and very timely. So thanks for being on the show, ladies. Thank Appreciate you so it very much, Jan. Yep. Appreciate it. You bet. You have been watching Eye on Business Innovation. I am Christy Rittock, president of OC Angel Investors, and you are watching Eye on Business Innovation. Hi, this is David Friedman for Street Savvy Business on Eye on Business. And tonight we're going to talk about something really important for people both in the traditional world of commerce as well as in the online world. We're going to talk about good messaging, bad messaging, and we'll share some examples with you. So tonight it's my privilege to welcome Ryan Phelps. Pleased to meet you. Ryan is the president of RP Marketing. So Ryan, tell us about yourself. Yeah, so uh, as you said, my name is Ryan Phelps, and so I've actually been uh, in the marketing world uh, for a couple of years now, and uh, so I've really found a passion for helping small business owners uh, learn how to really create a strong and effective marketing campaign through messaging. Yeah, but I think you're shortchanging yourself. I know you've been in the business more than a couple of years. So, um, you know, so, and, and this is not being on that series, Mission Impossible, for the last couple of series either. But um, I want to talk about uh, messaging, but I want to set the stage first and talk about what digital marketing is versus regular marketing you know, traditional marketing. So what's the definition of digital marketing today? Well, digital marketing is really kind of has really shifted over all the whole marketing worlds because before you kind of had the big ones, right? You had TV, radio, direct mailers. Those were kind of the traditional marketing methods. But now with, uh, you know, email and all the social media, uh, you know, companies that are coming out, it's really changed how people market. And so digital marketing is really how to be able to find a a cold lead online and bring them through your funnel and convert them into a paying client. Yeah, but I think digital marketing also has a component where you have to do two things, really, and will stay online. The first one is to create awareness. Okay, mm -hmm. so I want to talk to you about SEO. So SEO has been talked about, you know, in just about any uh, newspaper, trade rag, as being the key for small, medium, even large size business. What is SEO and how do you apply that to messaging? Yeah, well, with, with SEO, you know, part of the, the issue is that it's, it's one of the things where for certain businesses it can be an absolute game changer and a major focus for what they need, but not for everyone. Or there's just different tactics in which you need to approach SEO. And so there's, you know, some small companies where they're very localized 
where SEO focused just locally um, can, can be huge and bring people through the door. Other times it's not as uh, important or doesn't need to be focused on quite as much. But when it comes to messaging, if you can get like a, a video, if you're doing some video marketing, there's ways to rank it on Google where people go and they, <clears throat> they kind of hear what it is that you're, you're trying to convey or, or how they build value. And it really helps to convert people. But you have to have the right messaging in that video. Yeah, so I want to <clears throat> focus on that messaging aspect. So there's messaging for awareness and brand. So, for example, when I was in the cellular business, our tagline was the way people talk around here, and we used that messaging to create awareness, and we would probably today look at SEO words and ad words surrounding that. How does a small company use their tagline or their message in developing SEO? So with that, it's really about trying to find out what is on the forefront of people's minds. Okay. And, and how do you connect with them through that? And so, uh, you know, there's, there's what people call like clickbait, right? Where there's oh, certain... Oh, I do it all the time. <laughs> Especially if it's video. Right. <laughs> and so, but a lot of people really put a, a negative connotation, right? It's like, oh, you're, they're just trying to get people to click. But if you have messaging and, and actual content that backs that up, uh, then it's, it's a good thing, right? You, you want right. that. And so small businesses can really leverage the power of kind of these catchy titles to get people to actually take action on that item. All right, so if they want to come up with the right um, words to use and the right message for awareness now, I'll get into something else in terms of lead gen in a second, but if they want to get the right message, how does a company or a small business, medium business, go about setting that message? Do they use customer panels? Do they look at Google you know, analytics? Do they, what do they use? How do they do that? Um, well, a lot of that is typically I consult with my clients to do some kind of small A-B testing okay. on a couple of different things. So use the database that you already have and set up a couple of different, uh, whether you know, it's emails or landing pages or whatever it is, with different types of messaging with little tweaks to find out what's really resonating with people. And then you can use that and take that on the larger scale uh, for when you're focusing more on awareness and brand. Okay, so that's cool. So we have A-B messaging, and we're doing that for branding and awareness. Now so let's switch mm -hmm. over to the other component. I know you're an expert in lead acquisition online. Right. So how do you set the right message for lead generation and lead closure? Right, well, one of the biggest issues that small businesses have, especially if they're doing any sort of online advertising to just get people into the top of their funnel, is keeping the messaging consistent and keeping mm -hmm. it focused. All right, so we have A-B testing so far to get, make sure your message is correct, and we mm -hmm. have consistency in message. Let's talk about a third component called call to action. How important is a call to action online versus a call to action like in a store where you see a, you know, a, a point of purchase display? Right, well, with call to actions, one of the most important things, and a lot of small businesses don't like to do it, but ask. Tell them to take action. And as long as the, the page and the messaging that you're conveying is building value, you want to give them something that they can't say no to. And yep. so, you know, a lot of people will give, you know, a free ebook or a free consultation. And, and while, like, that's okay, it's not as strong as it can be. But if you can give something that's really going to help them. So, like, let's just say for an example, a financial advisor. If they have a, a landing page, instead of you know at the bottom saying, "Hey, call us for you know a free consultation," you know we'll give you a free analysis of your portfolio, something that truly benefits them rather than just giving away something for free. See, Lee, Lee's my son. He's a financial advisor. Listen to this guy. <laughs> it's very important. You want to build your business and take care of me in my old age. Um, so let me let's talk about good messages and bad messages. Give me some examples of good messages. I don't care if they're from the uh, perspective of brand or from the perspective of uh, call to action. Okay, well, uh, let's, let's go ahead and just talk about uh, generating, like lead generation. Let's, okay, let's focus we'll on that. There. So there, there's one example um, that uh, there was a dentist, and she did a lot of like, big work, so she, a lot of her clients wanted to pay monthly. And so she always had this kind of this advertisement or kind of put it out there of 0% interest. Right. Everyone, <laughs> car dealerships, everyone, they all use 0% interest. But what, uh, as I you know, worked with them, I realized that it's not that they had 0% interest, but the dentist was paying for the interest. 
Yeah, that one I like. So the dentist will pay me to actually come to him. Oh, I love that one. <laughs> so we wanted to go ahead and let, let's tweak the messaging. And let's, instead of saying 0% interest, how about we care about you so much, we will pay your interest for you. Oh, I like that. I've seen that in some retail stores, like I'll pay for your taxes on President's Day. Right. You know, but it's cool. All right. We're running out of time, unfortunately, but I wanted you to give the viewing audience three takeaways from your experience to help them with good messaging. All right. So with, with good messaging, yeah, three things that you want to do. Uh, one is that you want to make sure that you sell on value, okay. not on price. Yep. So don't try to be price competitive. Just find a way to solve your prospect's issue. Okay, number two. Uh, number two is that you want to make sure um, that you are, are really targeting their main problem. Everyone can only think of one thing, so find out what's that one thing that's keeping them up at night and provide the solution. And three? And then three, you really want to make sure um, that you are constantly trying to um, find out what's really going to resonate them, what's, what's going to, to really grab them, make them think, you know what, that's something that I need. I think that's great. Ryan, pleasure to have you on the show tonight. This is David Friedman for Street Savvy Business on Ion Business. And I want to do a shameless plug. Uh, at the end of November of last year, I published a book called Street Savvy Business, A Way to Prevent Corporate Mediocrity, based upon some of the shows that we have done here and some of the other ideas that I've come across in my consulting. Have a good day. Have a good evening. Over and out.